Hello friends, I'm no therapist, but I'm your host Stephanie Goodman. I'm a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and a woman of faith. Often friends ask me how I have a successful marriage while blending families and staying optimistic in life. This podcast features people with real life stories about success in relationships and triumph over trial. Have you ever felt like maybe a relationship isn't meant for you in this life? This is the story of Annie and Tim, two people who were part of my life separately. And after many years of seeing them struggle to find love, I had the joy of helping them come together. It's kind of dreamy. They are sharing their personal story of planting a seed of faith and letting God intervene to bring them happiness. Hello friends, thank you again for joining me. Today I have my dear friends, Annie and Tim Bishop. We are sitting in a beautiful cabin in the beautiful Pine Valley, Utah, and we are being enveloped by a wonderful rainstorm, aren't we friends? Yes, Yes. it's beautiful. Nice thunderstorm. That's exactly right. We love hearing the thunder outside. So if there's some pitter-patter on the window, you'll know that we're talking from truth. (laughs) So I'm excited to introduce to you to my dear friends, Annie and Tim, and I think you're going to enjoy the journey of hearing about our stories and how we know each other and uh, just the, the miracle that brought all of us together. Tim, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, what you sure. do? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm one of seven kids in my parents' family. Um, I'm actually the third, third of seven. Uh, my dad was in the Marine Corps, so we moved not as often as most families because after about four children, the Marine Corps doesn't like moving you. So we spent most of my growing up years in the South, either in Georgia or North Carolina. Um, my dad was stationed in, in North Carolina for 12 years before my mission. I came out to BYU, ended up after one semester meeting somebody, and after a year we got married. And um, We were married for 15 years, ended up divorcing. And as far as me, I, uh, I'm an artist. I tell people I'm an artist when they ask what I do, but I also work security so that we can eat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, one thing that I didn't mention is I'm also the father of three amazing kids. Oh, so. yeah, after 15 years, that's, that's excellent. Let's see, I was single for 13 years after before meeting Annie. And uh, we've been married now for two and a half years. Now, Annie, tell us about yourself. Where did you grow up? And Okay. Well, I was born in California. My father worked for the government. So we also moved a little bit. We went from um, Calif- Northern California to Virginia when I was younger. And then moved to Colorado. I spent the majority of my growing up years in Lakewood, Colorado. And... Um, When I was 14, moved to Utah, and that's pretty much where they finished off, was being in Utah. I am number three of four. Um, Tim and I both are number three. I think that's where we get some of our similarity. (laughs) (laughs) And, um, yeah, so I, too, was married, um, had my three children with my first spouse, spouse, Spent almost 11 years in that marriage, and then gave a second, had a second marriage. Um, By the time it was all said and done, um, you know, we we split about after nine and a half years, but it was about 11 years by the time the divorce was final. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I um, pretty much felt like I was done. I was after putting after into putting two in relationships. two relationships, bad yeah. relationships, and so, um, and my 
was kind of keeping my, finally keeping my focus on my children, who at that point were really young adults. Um, I was alone, and I felt the loneliness, Mm -hmm. and I always wondered, you know, because I always felt in my heart, you know, if I live a good life, the Lord will put somebody with me in the eternities, and wondered what he'd be like, just like I wondered when I was trying to work it through the, you know, earthly desires of having a a companion, I, you know, but I, yeah, I just had hit that point, you know, I'm good. I think life's okay now. I finally thought, okay, I've come to this maturity where it's okay. Hmm. And I had more peace with it because of it. And, and I did trust that the Lord would provide me with somebody. It didn't matter who it was. And this is kind of the fun thing when I look back on it, was it was a preparation for me to come to the understanding that it didn't matter who it was. It didn't matter. It didn't, I didn't have to have the expect, shouldn't have the expectations or didn't need an expectation to be happy mm-hmm. other than I find, found finding somebody who would put the Lord first, who would love the Lord even above myself. By doing that, would love me more. Did you and, feel like that was an impossibility? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't think that was even a reality. And that's hard sometimes. Yeah. It feels very lonely. Yeah, it did. And I'm pretty sure there's still a lot of people out there that can relate to that. And that's the hardest phase, I think, in life. And one you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. Mm, that's a really good point. And yet, when you look back, do you see maybe how things are being prepared for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Preparation for, you know, um, a softening of heart on my part, because the Lord had tried to prepare me a couple years earlier, and literally it said to me before um, somebody, hint, hint, (laughs) had tried to introduce me to him. Oh, and, and literally, I'm just driving down the road, minding my own business, and I get that, you know, I think, for me, it was not uncommon for the Holy Ghost to speak to me when I'm just being calm and just thinking and processing and got that, okay, I'm preparing somebody for you. And I was like, no, uh-uh. Are you kidding me? No, are you kidding Serious? Me? I just like, said no, no more. No, yeah, not <laughs> going there. Can it not just be enough? Can it not just be enough that I just live out a good moral life and then you just you can assign me anyone I'll trust you <laughs> I'll trust you on that <laughs> let's just not do it in this life just not on this not earth. on this side <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust people <laughs> so um yeah so that's where I was and then actually in reality I went through one more bad relationship mm. and had to go through that just okay I, I know what I don't want to really help me, important. and I think that was part of a preparation mm-hmm. to help me become, and this is a word I've become more introduced to recently from somebody else. We did a podcast with Jeff and Kathy and intentions, becoming intentional. Oh, yes. You know, and I Making, think... Setting a right, goal setting and goals having a and focus. Stuff. Exactly. Hmm. And so... Looking back on it now, I realize that was a preparation for me to become intentional about the type of relationship that I was going to pursue, that I was going to own, that I was going to be a choose to be a part of. And um, so, so you can definitely see those steps of preparation in the past. I I love how you said that you were at a place of I'm okay without needing a relationship. I really feel like that is a strong point that when you get to that place of I don't need a relationship to complete me that that is actually a very healthy level. Yeah. Yeah, I think it can be, but I think it was almost 2 years later when I became okay with not having a relationship, but also being okay with the Lord providing Mm -hmm. somebody. And that it took me two years to get to that point. So let's move into how you had this man come into your life. You're at a place where 
you've turned your heart over to the Lord, you're allowing him to guide you. You've had an experience where you realize this is not what I want to have and thank you, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay. An amazing friend tried to introduce us, like I said, two years earlier. I'm looking at her. <laughs> and 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 at that attempt, it was more just a, you know, I know this really great guy. You should check him out. And she, you're sharing with me about his qualities. And I was like, oh, I'm not ready. He sounded just like me in the male version, going through the same kind of struggles. Mm. And that's where I was like, no, I don't. I don't want to be in anything that I have to um, be the strong one. I was tired of being the strong one, and I was like, sure. so I had some insecurities and um, and I and misunderstandings because I was already putting my own interpretation on things, and so um, here I am two years later, and I've had some. You know, the Lord's had more time to work with me, and I. I'm at a point of that it's like, okay, I'm scared to death mm -hmm. to take this leap, but if this is your will, I keep, you know, all right, I keep going back to that, um, that experience. I'd had, in short, just in brief, I'd had a near-death experience, and I knew part of the process of my choosing to come back was um, to find this person to be a part of this experience that the Lord really, I guess, really wanted me to have. And and not just the Lord, but all my family members, all my friends, everyone was rooting for Annie to have the fairy tale love story because of the struggles everyone had seen me go through. Mm -hmm. And um, And so having that softening of heart, but also being afraid and not being willing to go on any dating sites. <laughs> the Lord kind of took in his own hands and I come home from California literally the next day and you say to me, I've had a dream. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. All right, and with the funny thing is, I knew as soon as you said, I don't know why I haven't, I woke up and told Kells and talked to Kells about it, and I don't, and I'm thinking, why haven't I tried to introduce the two of you before? And my, I'm like, <laughs> you have. Instantly, I know, without you saying the name, I'm like, okay, I know I should know his name. Huh, okay, yeah. like this is a name that's like a, it's such a, it's a name I should remember, but mm -hmm. I can't. And I said, okay, yeah, you're going to have to remind me what his name is. And I'm driving, and you're telling me this experience, this dream, and that all you could remember was that we were really, really happy. That's so And that so the true. joy was just like, Annie, I'm telling you, like, I feel like it was... I had this dream for a reason, you know, will you give him a chance? <laughs> and I'm like driving, knowing, I'm just like, okay. And I knew I could picture him. I remembered you showing me on Facebook two years before. And I just remember like saying no. And I just remember going, okay, this is going to be who it is. I'm, and I just knew it. Mm -hmm. And as we're driving, you asked, once I said, okay, I gave you the yes, you're instantly texting Tim. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So the night before, I dare say that I had decided that it is not my job to set any of my friends up. And I have many <laughs> friends around me constantly, which we love. We we embrace the fact that we have friends that are that are single and oh, yeah. that feel comfort to come and be with Kels and I. And we hope that we are an example of, you know, remi reminding you of, of that dream of having companionship. Yeah. Uh, which I'm so grateful that Kels and I see that mission together. Yes. And it's a beautiful mission. I really see you do. You are that example for everyone around you. And that's part of, which I'll let Tim share, you know, part of the our purpose in the way we dated was the example you set for him when you guys were dating tim and i became friends because when i was single mm -hmm. i 
came to a place where I wanted to start living my dream, which was to use my artwork to bring an income. And I found Tim's artwork. He posted a little bit of it on uh, LDS Planet. Is that where it was? Probably. On LDS Planet. And I was so enthralled with these colors and I could feel his dedication, his pureness of heart and, and his desire to bring joy. I remember when we met on LDS Planet, you specifically told me up front, I'm not interested in dating you, <laughs> but I am interested in your artwork. And the honesty was refreshing. Really? Um, it's good to hear. <laughs> so I just, I said, sure, why not? Let's. So we, we met, we kind of exchanged different pieces of artwork. You showed me a couple of the illustrated books that you'd done and... Um, some of the, I guess you were doing some cartooning for a local newspaper. newspaper. Yes. You brought some of those and, and showed right. them to me. And the, what was really cool about that whole thing was that's when I met Kells, too. Because yes. you introduced me to your, at the time, My boyfriend. My interest. <laughs> and uh, he came over and we found out that, you know, we're the same age. We have... Similar things in music, interests, and yes. music, and Star Wars, and, <laughs> and definitely just Star a Wars. lot of a lot of things that we had in common. And uh, but the the thing that impressed me the most, and this is something Annie was alluding to earlier, is we were talking about dating, and you were telling me how impressed you were with Kells and how he treated you, and and you said. Um, one of the, my favorite things about Kells is he calls me every night and wants to say a prayer with me and read scriptures. And at this time, I, I was pretty early on in my 13 years of divorce, being divorced. And i had been divorced for about two or three years, three or four years, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, and I wanted that. It set, it set an example for me in my dating. I wanted somebody who was going to read scriptures with me and be comfortable praying with me. And for 13 years that I dated, I never was able to find somebody who was willing to do those things. And I only dated LDS women. Yeah. So it, it was puzzling 13 to me. 13 years of knowing, willing. Why do you think that that is? Why do you think because that? Because I wasn't supposed to be with any of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was being prepared yeah. myself. And I was discovering with every relationship. And, and I've made the mistake in the past of calling them bad relationships. But it's more appropriately incompatible relationships. I like that. Because they weren't really bad people necessarily. Correct. But the, the women that I dated, we just, I, I had specific things that I wanted to have in common. And my religious beliefs and dedication was one of them. And I just couldn't find anybody. They were religious in their, in their way, but together we couldn't come to that mutual agreement to pray and read scriptures together. Wow. And I had no idea that you held on to that standard all that time that we were friends, too. I really appreciated that uniqueness in the relationship that Kels and I formed, that we we did enjoy reading the scriptures together and praying together it was something that I missed so dearly with my first relationship. To be able to actually discuss the words that are in the scriptures and, and how it pertains to our life was so yummy to my soul. Mm -hmm. And it definitely set a place for me of this is what I desire in my life. So it yeah. also put up a standard in my life that this is important to me. Well, in my, my marriage, I was married for 15 years and my ex-wife we we did that we read our scriptures with our kids and and we had our family prayers every night up until about three years before our divorce she stopped doing it she refused 
to read scriptures with me or pray. And I, my son says that I was naive about the whole thing and couldn't see what was happening, but he saw it. He was only 12. Wow. And he saw it happening right there in front. And he says, you just were oblivious to it. You didn't want to recognize the fact that she was pulling away. Mm-hmm. And she was changing. And so I, I think as I was dating, I recognized the importance of having that that spiritual aspect to the relationship. It couldn't be a physical. There, trust me, in 13 years, I, I met plenty of physical. They, they, the, pe- the women that I dated tended to want to jump into getting into those physical relationships really quick, which made me uncomfortable. Um, and I spent 13 years on dating sites <laughs> <laughs> with absolutely no positive results and I was still single. So finally, I this was three days before you contacted me through text message. Three days before you sent me that text, I had had enough. I just ended an off and on four year relationship with somebody and uh, it was fun. Two weeks after I ended it, she ended up marrying somebody else. Two weeks. <laughs> anyway, that kind of explains the whole four years. Oh, yeah. um, I finally just knelt in prayer and said, you know, I'm done. Kind of like Annie, I had gotten to the point where I was comfortable and almost looking forward to being single for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I had determined that after 13 years that there just wasn't going to be. But I I left it to the Lord. I said, you know, I'm still willing to move my feet as long as, but you're going to have to open the doors. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was done. I wasn't going to date anymore. I got off all of the the dating sites and, and, uh, started making plans for my life and three days later I get a text at work hey Tim what are you doing <laughs> and, out of the uh, blue Stephanie <laughs> like oh, I'm working I'm doing okay and then he said um would you be interested in meeting my angel friend <laughs> yeah and, I and of course that. Now you were you sitting, did not. You were sitting yeah. right next to me on the couch. I mean, you told me that. I'm like, you did not just call me an angel. Oh, my <laughs> word. No. Well, and, and I didn't know they were sitting next to each other either. It's so <laughs> so I, I started responding in a little snarky because, you know, I've just decided I'm never oh, going to date again. <laughs> True. And uh, so I said, oh, angel friend, huh? I said, so how do I, how do I, meet this or talk to this angel friend do I pray <laughs> because Tim has a very sharp sense of humor oh, yeah you have to know what you're saying to him <laughs> right <laughs> it's going to be turned up <laughs> yeah the... if there's a possible way to to throw it back at you he'll he'll do it yeah there's there's a lot of I usually tell people my the first comment out of my mouth is usually sarcasm so if you want the serious part, you have to wait through the sarcasm. <laughs> Some people just don't get me because they are you are you being are you serious? <laughs> Thus Annie got me a shirt that says seriously. <laughs> That's all it says. On it. I have seen that shirt. He'll get confused as he's walking, and people will look at him complete strangers. Seriously. <laughs> yes. He's like yes. Oh yeah. Anyway. Yes. That's right. You forget so. that you're even wearing that word, and somebody <laughs> says to you seriously. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it was fun. We, uh, that point, we Annie and I. You um, asked how? Yeah, you were asking though. Yeah, I was how finding to out how out. to how do I get a hold of her, and I got the the impression at that time that I needed to see where this would go. This is Annie was the first person that I dated that I didn't meet through a website. 
Because <laughs> we met through Stephanie. Yeah. And uh, we, but we did start out chatting on Facebook. Yeah, because I told you when he was asking how to reach out to me, I, that tell him to go ahead and Facebook stalk me. Okay. And if he still has an interest, then I think like Facebook has me, been useful. Me. Yeah. In that way, yeah, of helping to see what their personality is, what their interests are, and how do they choose to put themselves out there in the world. Oh, and the right. cool thing about looking at Annie's Facebook page was that it was she seemed real. It was very genuine. Uh, I didn't see a lot of extra flamboyancy stuff like you see on some people's where they're they're trying to make themselves to look and be more than they really are. Mm-hmm. Then you meet them and you go, well, this is not the same <laughs> thing. This? Yes. So, so is this a show you're putting on? Right. No, she's, she, she was up front. She told me, she says, I'm an open book. And right there on Facebook, she was, she put it on as an open book. Mm-hmm. She wasn't pulling any punches or holding anything back. It so refreshing, right, right? So, I think for both Tim and I, we realize, okay, this we found somebody that has a really major, important aspect of a relationship that we really want to proceed. And so he had asked me to go out on a, our first date, and we went. He asked me if it would. If I thought it would be corny, if cheesy, it, cheesy, cheesy, cheesy <laughs> to go to the Salt Lake Temple on the grounds, first date, on our first date, just to walk around and enjoy because it was his first day off work. Okay. Um, for it was his first day for his weekend. He was working nights. Was there any part of that that took you aback, like temple first no. date? No, not at all. Because I wasn't thinking in my head, oh, I'm, you know, we're, you know, he's trying to rush into marriage at all. Because we just were talking scripture. We were just kind of getting to know each other. I'm just taking this one day at a time. I'm no longer reading into what all his intentions are. I'm actually just going, okay, yeah, I would love to do this. (laughs) And I was very sick and I couldn't drive that kind of distance on my own because of my lack of stamina. And um, and so he, when he asked me, he was really shocked. Yeah. I mean, he's like thinking, I'm going to say, yeah, I'll meet you there. Which temple do you want to meet at? Uh-huh. He asked any temple. But he said, I said, well, which one would you like to go? And he said, Salt Lake. Yeah. Um, because of all the different grounds, you know, being open and it yeah. being Sunday, we mm-hmm. could, there was more we could do. So... I said, sure. Um, he's like, okay. And I says, yeah, you can pick me up. <laughs> and he's thinking, I was, what? What? <laughs> pick you up? I never actually on a first date pick somebody up at their home. It's always meet when you're dating, somewhere. you meet somewhere so you both have an escape route. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think if he would have just been anyone, I wouldn't have felt comfortable. But knowing you knew him uh-huh. for as long as you had, mm-hmm. I trusted you. Hmm. that okay he's and I trusted him because of what his interests were and he you know and the week we'd been communicating I didn't have any reason to question I looked through Facebook stalked him you know it's like okay I think I think we're okay with this and so he bless his heart looking back I had no idea so he gets off work at what or you know early morning gets a couple hours of sleep drives down from Sandy to Provo to pick me up to drive to Dr- Salt Lake, and we I held I made a picnic for us because I had a lot of limitations with my diet, mm-hmm. and we went and we had our picnic and we had a great time and so then we ended up um, the it, the clouds started coming in there was a little drizzling and so we decided we were going to go in go into the North Visitor Center and um, so I. I'm thinking, okay, yeah, I'm I'm not really energetic, so I go and I, I'm going to wait for him. And he's going to take our picnic basket and stuff to the car, which was... It was a block and a half away from... Oh. A Salt Lake block, you oh. know. So, <laughs> yeah, this was, this was really funny. So the, there were darker clouds rolling in, and I dropped her off at the visitor center, took our stuff, and headed to the north gate of Temple Square... 
And as I was standing to leave the, to cross a street, I heard a thunderclap and then just a downpour of rain. <laughs> so I got drenched. He was completely so wet. soaked. <laughs> so On this wet. first date. Dripping. And uh, I ran this, the, the stuff to the car in the rainstorm, put it in the car, and as soon as I turned to come back, it stopped raining. So here I'm, I'm looking like and a, your a wet rat. And your excuse what? <laughs> and there's no rain. And by the time I got back to the, the visitor center, I was thinking, well, I could go in the bathroom and they've got the hand dryers. Yeah. I'll just turn that thing <laughs> on me and try and dry myself off. Uh-huh. And I, I just looked down at myself and said, I can't dry that. I am soaking wet. You know, to the point I'm squeezing water out of my <laughs> shirt. And uh, I said, well, she, <laughs> she's going to get me the way I am. So I went up to the, she was in the in front of the Christus waiting for me. And I went up there and I tried to sit away from her because I'm wet. <laughs> and be she's not. I didn't want to get me wet. And, <laughs> and so I, she's not. and she says, Come sit next to me. Come sit next to me. So I scared. Like, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm soaking wet. Don't. But it didn't matter to her, which also impressed me. Because a lot of the women that I dated, that would have been a big deal. You know, don't don't get me wet. Don't. You're not don't perfect on my their feathers. first date? <laughs> so, uh, mm. yeah, it, it really was impressive. And then... We decided we were going to read scriptures together. And I asked him if he'd let me pick. Because just in that time, I don't know, I'm going to get emotional. Just in that time that we spent with the picnic and getting to know him. And I have to tell you, before he came, I told him I was scared to death. That if he tried to kiss me, I would run. And I said, but, and he's like, he, and I, I knew he wasn't going to, but I just had to express my concerns. Mm-hmm. And he was great. He says, oh, no, that's totally fine. I said, okay. But by the time he came, I t- before he came, I said, okay, I feel like we need to have a long hug when you first get here. Yeah, like, because uh, just we've gotten a, to a, know each other. We've gotten to know each other. We've been doing scripture and... together and praying already together uh-huh. over the phone. Yeah. With, as your example, you know, yours and Kel's example for us. And and I just um, felt like I had to do that. And But I also let him know that I wouldn't be able to kiss for a long time. That it would be months before I'd be in a position. And so he was like, sure, you know, and... He was totally open to it for him coming. You know, he's this this big guy and I had this little scrawny thing because I was so sickly. I was really thin. You know, I was like maybe 100 pounds, just right. barely over. And he's like this big guy. He's like 250. I was about 260. 260, you know. And, and I'm just like, okay, you know, like just I remember him hugging me and I just felt so safe. Yeah in his arms and it was kind of like you know just this long lost friend that i hadn't seen in a long time is how it felt and that's when i was like okay i needed that because i had no physical attraction because i was at not an emotional state and i told him this on our date first date i have have no probably it didn't matter who the guy was emotionally i wasn't i was struggling to be there to want to open up to being, you know, looking at somebody like, oh, you know, I could work on a relationship with you. You could be a potential spouse or any of that. And so. Because you've been hurt. I've been so hurt much. so much. And so, um, so we're sitting here and I'm like, knowing I am so comfortable with you, this, that I just could be with you, like as a eternally, just be by your side and be in the space and feel so comfortable and feel so safe. And what? And, and wet didn't matter. <laughs> and, um, and so I, um, so we, I said, okay, I had had a, a dear friend year, like over a decade earlier, share this kind of with me, the importance of Alma 32 
and taking it down and breaking it down in how you nurture a relationship. This is in the Book of Mormon. This is in the Book of Mormon. Alma 32. Alma 32. And so it's about planting a seed, planting a seed of faith. And taking that in, you know, in any kind of relationship and how you can nurture and grow in love. And so I thought, okay, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to be getting, planning to be married, but this is the kind of relationship I would want to start um, with Tim is wow. to, to, plant the seed. to plant the seed. And so we read that scripture and we discussed it. And, um, and so we, we, what was that like, Tim, to read that scripture and have her be open to discussing that? Was that, well, it was, re- it was really cool because we were, we're, here we are sitting in front of a statue of Christ uh-huh. and, uh, there's people all around us and, but it was just me and her, even yeah. though we're in a crowd, it was just me and her. And we read it individually. We didn't read it to each other or read it out loud. We read it individually at the same time. And uh, when we were done, yeah, just to ourselves. And uh, when we were done, she asked me, she says, so what are your feelings about it? What do you think of the scripture? It's a good thing you read then, huh? She (laughs) did the homework. Well, she, she told me before we were reading that she she explained how we could apply it to our relationship and as we're reading to read it as if the seed of faith is a seed of faith for our our relationship growing and so i'd never done that before i it was new to me but it was so cool to to read and show the the personal application of that scripture to our situation. As with most scripture, you can apply it to to how the Lord wants it in your life. Absolutely. So, yeah, it, it really it really impressed me. And from that point on, I absolutely loved reading scriptures with Annie. We did it because I worked nights. I would get to work and I would do, I'm a security guard, so I did, I would do an exterior patrol in the truck so that we'd have some privacy and I'd call her up and we'd read scriptures. We read from the Book of Mormon, we read from the Bible. Bible. She was reading John with her grandmother and uh, so we'd reread the chapters that she was reading with her grandmother and discuss those and sometimes those discussions would last hours (laughs) hours <laughs> and here i am i'm i'm still working and doing my job but i'm able to discuss scripture reading and have a prayer and it just made my night it, it made working so much easier and i i gained a very a very special and solid relationship with Annie based on our spiritual growth together before we ever had any type of physical growth together mm-hmm. which I I think that is an important part of our relationship maybe it's not that way for everybody but for me and her and everything that we had been through individually in our relationships marriages and that we had that solid spiritual foundation to build on that's where we started as opposed to like i said i would met so many that were just so wanting to get straight into physical contact and mm-hmm. and making out and and i was never ever comfortable with that and here i was with annie and i felt at home i felt like i was where i was supposed to be and that all of that stuff for 13 years was leading to this moment. Mm. Did I know that I was going to marry her? No, not yet. <laughs> but I, I have to admit, I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was excited at the prospect of where this seed was going to grow. Yeah. 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 So. I am 
am so grateful that Annie and Tim were willing to share their journey today. Let's practice trusting the Lord through the seasons and storms of life, especially with our own relationships. If you've enjoyed this episode, remember to subscribe, share, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram. Please comment because I would love to hear about what you think and what you want to see in the future. I'm no therapist, but I am your host, Stephanie Goodman.